hopefully he was kind to me. <laughs> All right, so um, this morning we're going to be talking about the success of Jumo 3. Um, I guess it helps to turn it on. Um, morning, I'm Michael Babker. I'm of Joomla's production leadership team. Uh, I've been contributing to Joomla since 2010. Um, a lot of what I've been doing has been with the bug squad, working on uh, stabilizing code, making sure that features are well tested, uh, working on improving our automated testing systems, and uh, I've been doing a lot of coordination with the, with the releases. Uh, I've been part of the release team for the entire 3X release series, and I've actually been uh, leading the releases for the better part of the last year and a half. Um, in a past lifetime, I was a member of the US Army, uh, served for nine years as a systems and network administrator, so I have a pretty in-depth uh, IT background. Uh, I actually was stationed here in Germany for two years, um, stationed in South Korea for a year, and a little bit of time stationed in the United States also. And uh, beyond Joomla, beyond the IT world, uh, I got a college degree in web design, but unless you want a site that looks like Bootstrap, don't ever ask me to do design work. Um, I really love the beach. I grew up um, in Sarasota, Florida, which is the home of one of uh, America's top beaches. And uh, I, I am a bit of an IT geek. I've got a couple of uh, Microsoft and CompTIA certifications that kind of went along with uh, the job I was doing in the Army. Um, so, as I mentioned, this talks about the success of Joomla 3. Um, it's going to be rather opinionated because you can't strictly define what makes the project so great from a factual standpoint. Everyone's going to have their own opinions about something. You may agree, you may not agree with everything that I say in here, but um, so far the reception to this has been pretty great. Uh, ideas that I keep getting from people are well in line with uh, what I talk about here. So the first really thing, the first really big thing that I think makes Jumo 3 a good success is there isn't that painful migration going from 2.5 to the 3 series, like what you had upgrading from 1.0 or 1.5. Um, aside from having to redesign your templates, which we said well in advance that we were going to break coming into 3, um, the migration's pretty painless when you're upgrading core. Uh, we can't always guarantee that extensions will upgrade very well. Um, it's just beyond the scope of what the core project can do. But in terms of the core platform, um, we have the inbuilt support to upgrade your sites. Uh, we don't make you depend on third-party tools, and it's rather, it's rather easy to go ahead and upgrade your sites from 2.5 to 3. Um, you still need to do the proper planning for everything, make sure that your extensions upgrade, make sure that your layouts work, whatever the case may be, but it's nowhere near as time involved as previously. Um, we've had a bunch of Google Summer of Code projects the last three years that have really defined uh, the Joomla 3 series in terms of features. Uh, going back to 2012, the multilingual installer features that went into the install, uh, making it much easier to set up multilingual sites in Joomla, uh, the redesigned template manager, um, working on improving microdata for your CO, uh, some other um, platform-related stuff to work with third-party solutions, uh, and um, just looking at what we've done with Google Summer of Code this year, there's actually been quite a few uh, interesting projects. And uh, we've had some of those students actually stay on as contributors to the project and continue working on other miscellaneous projects. And there's actually uh, quite a few interesting pull requests uh, in line for future three, three series releases based on the work from these students. And uh, if we didn't have these students, some of these features which have been um, highly requested for years, like a redesigned media manager, probably would not be done. So uh, we're really appreciative of the students who want to take their summer and uh, contribute to open source projects and especially to Joomla. Um, the next thing that I really, really enjoy about Joomla 3 is the fact that we've redesigned the administrator interface. Um, 101525, it, it all was pretty similar going across. Uh, so the admin for seven, eight years was, in my opinion, getting boring because it was always the same, just a couple new icons, a couple new color schemes, keep going. 
Um, Joomla 3, I, I really enjoy working with the administrator interface much more because it's a fresh design and it's mobile friendly. And it just, in my opinion, it just makes working in a Joomla site much more fun and I, I don't, I don't dislike spending time on it like I do when I'm working on 1.5 or 2.5 sites per se. Uh, speaking of the responsiveness, um, integrating responsive web design features into the core Joomla platform. Uh, when we released Joomla 3 in 2012, responsive web design was becoming a really, really big thing that was being sought out in websites. And uh, Joomla was one of the first major CMSs to adopt uh, responsive design right into the core of the CMS with uh, implementing Bootstrap into the core. Uh, WordPress followed along shortly with responsive design. The current Drupal re uh, stable releases aren't um, responsive in core, but their next major release will include those responsive features. So just kind of highlights how we're paying attention to the market wave place, we're paying attention to the features that our users are looking for, and we're pushing for those features to stay on top, uh, be a technology leader, and uh, just make, make uh, the platform more intriguing to current users, new users, and uh, keep making Joomla awesome. Uh, next little thing I wanna touch on is the uh, J layout system. Um, new to Joomla 3 was, is this J layout interface, which enables you to create reusable HTML snippets and uh, this has actually come in very useful for places where we previously had hard-coded HTML markup that the only way to override was to hack core. Um, throughout the course of the three series, we've been implementing these layouts into the core, uh, either, either in those places where previously hard-coded markup was now overridable, or in places where you were using the same markup repeatedly, and now you can just use that single snippet for five or six different views. And um, there's actually a couple of groups that are focusing on continuing implementing this to make pretty much anything in the CMS overridable. Uh, that, that's been a pain point for quite a few of our front end integrators is, is they can't customize certain aspects of the uh, output. Uh, so as we continue implementing these, this layout system into core uh, and you see that extended flexibility and uh, just overall, it's gonna make for a much better user experience for our design personnel who really like to have full control over their layouts. Um, another big pain point has been our JavaScript libraries. Um, all the way up until 2.5, Core was shipped only with MooTools, and a lot of developers and designers were in, we're coming up with ways to include jQuery in their extensions, which was causing uh, quite a bit of an issue because now you have multiple jQuery versions floating around and they weren't always compatible. Um, when we integrated Bootstrap into Joomla 3, that inherently came with jQuery, and uh, there's been a, a major effort in the core platform to replace that use of the MooTools JavaScript platform with uh, jQuery. Um, as of the 3.3 releases, uh, I'd say 75, 80% of the core platform has been rewritten to jQuery. Uh, so there is still some MooTools dependencies, but it is much easier now to build a website and not be forced to have MooTools included in your front end uh, compared to a couple of years ago where if you took MooTools out of the system, you probably broke something. Um, Evolution in the web industry. All around us, the web industry is gonna, is always continually changing. Uh, new features are coming out, new design paradigms are uh, shaking up the industry. Y you have things like uh, responsive web design, which become a major hit, and if, you need, and if you're not building sites on it, you're probably gonna take a big hit. Um, Joomla has responded well to the evolving industry around us. As I said, we, uh, we were one of the first to implement responsive web design right into the core. We've taken security at heart with our releases and we've very publicly addressed uh, improving our security at a time when a lot of other web platforms are having major security leaks and data is getting leaked. 
Um, and as the web industry continues evolving around us, Joomla is going to continue adapting to it. Uh, another personal like is the Joomla framework. Um, if you're not aware, we have we used to have the Joomla platform that got renamed back to the framework, and those two projects were kind of developed separately from the CMS for a little while, and it was purposely done that way to enable the platform that the CMS was built on to kind of evolve and catch up with uh, some of the changing PHP industry around us. And uh, now we're starting to seep some of that work from the framework back into the CMS. Um, cu a couple of the advantages here are we're not, we don't have that duplicated code anymore. We're not maintaining uh, two sets of code to provide the same functionality. And um, just as we, as we start seeping some of this work back in and we start advancing our platform, we start uh, looking forward at what the next version of our platform should look like. Uh, some of that can be influenced by the work that's been done uh, separately from the CMS platform to kind of help up guide and uh, evolve and uh, really look at some of the features that we want to implement into the core and how we can do it without some of the, um, for lack of better terms, baggage or technical debt that's come along with how we have to maintain our code base. And um, it, it's actually really interesting uh, using this code, and uh, I'm actually looking forward to seeing how we could evolve the, CMS, evolve the CMS based on the work we've been doing with the framework, because there's actually a lot of uh, potential here that's been untapped, in my opinion. The maturity of the project. Um, nine years under the name of Joomla, 15 years about when you include the history with Mambo. The project has a long history, and it's really demonstrating how well it's maturing, how it's been staying in the marketplace. And all around the project, you just see a much higher maturity level because we have great leaders across the board. We have great volunteers across the board. And we have all these great tools that we keep introducing into our workflows, into our code bases to, to show how well that we function as a project. Um, and when the project, the community is working well, the code works well. When the code works well, the community works well. So it all kind of ties together. Um, on that kind of note, release management. Um, from my aspect, being the guy that's been leading releases for the last year, uh, we've made a lot of improvements to how we're managing our releases, how we're managing our code base, and, and how we're providing a stable product to everybody. Um, one of the key changes we made this year was in, in the code management specifically was we started building a branch for our next release immediately after the previous one. Um, so for example, with 3.1 and 3.2, we didn't start merging features until about two months before we projected releasing those releases. And it caused a major release rush with a lot of conflicts and new features contributors getting frustrated because they were having to continually update their code and keep it uh, working all the way up until we finally merged it. Uh, starting with 3.3 and going forward with, forward with 3.4, we've had a separate release branch for those releases immediately so that we could start merging features in immediately. Um, if you're not following on GitHub, if, you're not, if you don't uh, follow some of the commits, we merged the first patch for 3.4 within a week of 3.3's release, something that we had never done before because of how we're managing our code bases now. And the, overall, this uh, enables us to have better testing of what's going to be coming up in our future releases, uh, make sure that all the features are working well together, and uh, provide a much more stable product. Um, testing. We've made, we've made a lot of great strides in the testing of our platform over the course of the last couple of years. Um, there's been a renewed focus on automated testing within the code base, both the Selenium system tests and the unit tests. Uh, we've increased coverage on both of those testing platforms. We've actually used uh, the Google Summer of Code uh, for the last couple of years. We've had a project dedicated solely to improving that test coverage for the system testing side. 
Uh, and this is actually important because the automated tests help us to ensure that our code base is stable at all times. Um, if we ever do need to do a really quick release, we need to ensure that we have a stable product. We can't be spending extra days testing to ensure that uh, everything's working well. So these automated tests are very important to our release platform. Um, in addition to automated tests, we've lowered the barrier for the general user community to be able to test different bug fixes or new features through uh, different tools. Uh, one of them is a uh, patch testing component, which you can install right into your Joomla instance and be able to pull down a patch right from GitHub, apply it to your site, test a bug fix or a new feature, and then very quickly revert that patch out of your install. You don't need the developer knowledge of uh, version control system or an IDE or other tools that previously kept a lot of people from being able to contribute because they didn't have that skill level to be able to contribute to the project, test these things, and help ensure that the things that are important to you are getting into the code. Um, so with, with all that said, what do you think has made Joomla 3 such a successful release series? Anybody? Speed. What's that? It's fast. Performance, speed. They're he with us uh, raising our minimum PHP version um, and with PHP in general evolving, performance in Joomla has gotten uh, much better. And you see that across each of the PHP branches. Um, yeah. Security. So one thing I didn't touch on on uh, the evolution slide, which I usually do, is um, security to the extent, to a really big extent. Another main feature that's gone into uh, Joomla CMS is two-factor authentication. We were one of the first major CMSs to implement this level of security feature right into our core platform. Sure, you can do it with the other platforms, but you have to find a third-party solution to do it. Um, We've taken a very strong stance on security on our platform by integrating features like two-factor authentication, strengthening our password hashing mechanisms to ensure that you have a stable platform, a secure platform, and just all in all, you feel very comfortable using Joomla and you're not concerned from a security perspective. Networking. What's that? Networking. Networking? Can you elaborate? community. So irregardless of the software, I think the community would still network uh, and grow. Uh, I think the software does help with that some because it gives us a rallying point. Um, but having a strong community around the software is also important because it keeps uh, community members interested in collaborating. Uh, it keeps folks like me who are, who are coming in internationally wanting to get involved with other aspects of the uh, Joomla project. Microdata. Micro so uh, another of Joomla's strong selling points is uh, CO, uh, search engine stuff. Um, Google Summer of Code project the last two years has been a focus on um, CO elements through microdata and this year, the RDFA uh, protocol. And uh, that student has actually been uh, with the project since the uh, beginning of Summer of Code last year, working on improving those platforms to make it easy for uh, just general users to add these microdata elements into their site and uh, do it in a way that th it will be picked up correctly uh, in the search platforms. Um, there, there's a plugin out for testing right now from that Summer of Code student to uh, kind of show how you can implement some of that microdata stuff. And uh, he's actually working on, on uh, getting a pull request prepared to get all of that stuff merged in the core. Um, all those tools that he was using developing his uh, code the last couple of years. So um, in, fu in future releases, you'll see continued uh, improvement of these seal elements and part of it comes from that work. All right, so 
I did say that this is kind of opinionated, but there are some measurable results when you uh, look around the internet. Uh, one of those is in our uh, downloads. Uh, this is the chart for the last complete release cycle we had. This was for uh, 331 and 2522. Um, and in that six week period, you saw 945,000 downloads of Joomla 331 and 468,000 downloads of Joomla 25. And uh, if you remember when we raised our minimum PHP version, we also uh, extended support for 3.2 for security releases. And, and there's still uh, a good number of downloads on that 3.2 branch also. So all in all, in this six week period, uh, we had uh, just about one and a half million downloads. Um, Back in July, when I was originally writing this session, uh, I tweeted out a chart that was demonstrating uh, how our downloads were increasing per month. Uh, we're now averaging just over a million downloads per month. Uh, and it, over that 12 month span, um, when I tweeted that chart out, we had about 12 million downloads from the project. Um, unfortunately, I haven't looked at those numbers in the last couple of weeks, but the trend has pr pretty been stable with downloads of 3.3 continuing to grow and 2.5 starting to slow down. Uh, and, and this is actually good news since 2.5 is getting close to its end of life because just from a numbers perspective, that means that more people are looking at uh, implementing Joomla 3. Uh, new installs of Joomla 3 out outnumber the uh, new installs of 2.5. Uh, the 2.5 updates actually is double the uh, number of 2.5 new installs. And this is actually an important metric too because it's, it shows that users are uh, keeping their sites up to date. And um, it, once upon a time, that was kind of a fear in the Joomla community. It was updating when a new core release came out because of some of the issues in years past. So just from a numbers perspective, um, it shows that Joomla 3 is well liked and uh, it's being implemented and we can we see the downward trend in the 2.5 installs which means that uh, users are taking concerns about end of life or uh, they're looking at the features in Joomla 3 and wanting to implement those and, and they're adopting this platform. Um, this chart's a little bit biased because uh, of how contributors were measured. Um, this chart comes from uh, OpenHub, used to be known as Olo, if you didn't know about the name change. Uh, and it shows the number of code, tr code contributors to our project per month, starting way back in August 2005. This actually ends uh, in July of this year. And um, you see the spike towards the beginning, the end of 2011, beginning of 2012, and that's because when, of, uh, when we changed our version control system from SVN to Git, we could better measure the contributors going into the code base. Previously, only the committers were uh, being attributed, but now anyone who, who commits a patch gets proper attribution in the code base. And uh, you see all these spikes that come up every few months, and those spikes pretty much correlate into uh, the efforts that go into one of the releases. Uh, the big spikes towards the uh, middle of 2013 were all going into the 3.2 release. If you remember, 3.2 had features galore. And you just see a large number of contributors coming into the project, um, and especially around the release time, testing things, implementing new features, and uh, just all in all, it's helping to make a better product for everybody. Um, so looking forward, how's Joomla 3 going to continue being successful, help the project grow, help the community grow, keep everybody happy, and drink more beer? So if you remember earlier this year, we announced a new release strategy and we announced a roadmap. Uh, this is actually a screenshot of the roadmap from the developer site. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, you're welcome to go there, developer.joomla.org slash CMS slash roadmap, and uh, just check it out. Um, and it's, um, it's one of the first real firm uh, roadmaps that the project's ever put out in terms of setting goals for each release for features. And um, in terms of how we met those goals, at least for 3.4, we're doing really well. Um, another one of the things that the combined roadmap and uh, development strategy announcements did 
was uh, reaffirm the um, lifespan of the code base. Uh, so one of the concerns that was really, really, really loud in the community with uh, the previous release strategy was how quickly updates were being pushed out and, and how short of an overall lifetime that uh, code base had. Uh, Joomla 2.5, when you include uh, 1.6 and 1.7 into that, its total lifespan is literally two or three weeks shy of four years support from in, in terms of a stable product. And uh, this, was, this was not acceptable to a lot of uh, users. They were looking for a long-term supported platform. So one of the things that our new release strategy uh, dictates is the length of support for a product. Um, and using this roadmap as an example, um, so every time we make a new minor release, which was what 3.4 will be, uh, support is guaranteed for a minimum of two years after that minor release. So assuming that we release 3.4 next month, support for the 3 series would end no earlier than October 2016. But we're not planning on ending support for the 3 series anytime soon. Uh, if, you, if you go by how ambitious this roadmap was when it was written, we were planning on getting all the way up to a 3.10 release uh, sometime in the middle of next year. So assuming that we did that final 3.x release in the middle of next year, uh, support would end no earlier than two years after that. And the way things are looking right now in terms of how fast development is moving, how quick and uh, uh, the number of releases we want to put out, you're not going to see support for the Jumo 3 series end no earlier than 2018 at this point, which means that for the entire lifespan of the 3 series, you're looking at a product that has six years of support as a stable product. Uh, this is a lifetime in terms of an internet platform, but it, it gives that reassurance to our community that they have a long-term platform. They don't need to be thinking about these painful migrations, rewrites every couple of years like what our previous strategy had. Um, speaking of 3.4, uh, if you remember the original announcement uh, back in April about it, we had four goals that we really wanted to focus on. Um, three of those goals are either committed to the code base now or uh, ready to be committed, basically, just uh, waiting for final review and testing. And if you look at this slide, there's more than those four goals on this slide. Uh, just because we set goals for each of our releases doesn't mean that that's all that's going into the uh, releases. Uh, community members are still welcome to propose features, propose code, and uh, if it's tested, if it's accepted, and if it's suitable for our environment, then we'll go ahead and merge it. Um, for example, these top two items, Redis caching support and uh, PDO MySQL support. Um, Redis was a uh, feature that was implemented by a community member, assumingly because they wanted that type of support for the environment that they were hosting on. Uh, the PDO support was actually something that I picked up at a, a previous conference earlier this year. Uh, a couple people I was talking to had mentioned that they'd like to uh, be able to support PDO type operations uh, in their installs. And uh, we already had a PDO based database driver in, via the framework, so w we pulled that back into the CMS. And in 3.4, you'll now have that PDO support for MySQL. Um, this is actually the most painless database edition we've added because MySQL is already supported very well in the product. Um, Decoupling extensions. There's there's always been folks that want uh, to uninstall some of the excess stuff that comes with the CMS that, that they don't particularly use. And in 3.4, we're starting with that by uh, removing uh, the web links extensions, the component module and the search uh, plugins, and making those available standalone. Um, so what this actually means is that those extensions that get decoupled could actually evolve quicker because they aren't tied to the CMS release schedule, or they could fall out of support if the community doesn't want to support those extensions anymore. Of course, web links won't, we won't kill off web links before the end of the three series uh, support. So that will always be available during the three series. But if, if it's found that there's better solutions in the extension marketplace or our, our community doesn't even like web links anymore in a couple of years, it might just fall out of support completely. Um, 
And, and as we continue decoupling extensions, uh, what we'll end up with is a more modular platform. It'll be easier for you as a site implementer to pull out the things that you don't want on your site, you don't use on your site, while only keeping the tools that you need, which will make a much more uh, painless upgrade process also. Uh, currently, you can actually remove some of these extensions, but the, the files get back on your file system with updates because of how everything gets packaged. So this is a, a something that we want to address by decoupling these extensions. And then, of course, uh, we try to keep our uh, external libraries up to date. And um, there's a couple of major updates to our libraries included in this release. Uh, going back to the whole evolution thing, we don't know what the next big thing in the internet marketplace will be. But Joomla has always been pretty forward thinking, been at the front line in terms of a secure, uh, secured platform, a stable platform, and a current platform. So as the web industry evolves around us, so will we. There's a lot of chatter about what the next version of the CMS could look like, or even in some people's opinions, if a, if a CMS as it is today is still relevant. And to, to keep Joomla going forward, to keep things evolving, we're look, we discuss these types of things. We look at things like uh, implementing RESTful APIs, redesigning how output is generated, uh, and being able to integrate these other uh, tools to give you a more flexible publishing platform. And um, just all in all, it'll be interesting to see how the web industry evolves and how the software evolves based on that. An open project. There's more transparency today than when I got started with the project in 2010. I don't, and I don't just say that because I'm on the leadership team and I want to make things sound good. I, I truly believe that a, as a project at the leadership level, we are more open, we are uh, more welcome, and uh, we have a, a much happier and more, much uh, more contributing community today than we did four years ago. Um, some of that is based on uh, personal opinion, and some of that is based on feedback I hear when I'm traveling. Uh, I see a lot more leadership representation at Joomla events today than I did a few years ago. Uh, and I think that's a really great thing because it allows the community to interact with the leadership in a one-on-one -on -one environment, not just depending upon email to talk to these people that they think aren't listening to them. Um, where we moved our code to GitHub, which is hands down the most popular uh, code platform right now, and we changed our uh, version control system to make it a little bit easier for folks to contribute and to make it a more open contributing process. Um, and then a couple of weeks ago, we uh, turned off our old issue tracking system and moved everything to GitHub through our uh, custom issue tracking solution. So we have, we're have we much more accessible at a code level and uh, much more transparent at a, at a leadership level. And uh, this, all in all, this makes for a better community environment. And I think it makes people more comfortable using the product and uh, contributing to the product because they know that their feedback's being taken into consideration and they get to have these uh, interactions with people that make the decisions. Um, and the last thought going out here, uh, you always hear that Joomla's dying. Uh, the only guarantee in life is death. Uh, Joomla's been dying since the day it was born. That's, it's gonna happen one day, we all know it. But a as long as we're here, we're gonna go down swinging. Uh, the project's not gonna die anytime soon short of some nuclear type thing happening in the PHP marketplace. Uh, so to people that say that the project's dying and they try to use these skewed metrics to support their arguments, uh, there, there's other ways to counteract those arguments. When you look at download numbers, when you look at contributor numbers, when you look at what's going on in the Joomla community and how we're opening up and how we're continuing to evolve. Uh, and just all in all, um, there, there's no reason to think that Joomla's dying other than you want to spread some FUD. Um, that being said, uh, thank you guys for having me. Uh, it's been fun chatting with you, and if you've got any questions, I've got a little bit of time.
Uh, if you want to chat offline, uh, you can hit me up uh, through social media. You can hit me up around here. Um, let me grab a drink real quick, and then <laughs> I don't have a good voice for continuous speaking. So, the relationship between WordPress and Joomla is actually pretty strong. Uh, if you remember last year at the World Conference, um, Matt Mullenweg did one of the keynote speeches there. And uh, their lead developer, Andy Nason, was there for a couple days, too. And, um, you know, just a lot of us had these really great conversations with the two of them. And, and, it, and a lot of that conversation actually inspired uh, some of the development strategy changes that we made this year. And uh, that, that uh, relationship has kind of grown some. Um, I actually talk to Andy Nason all the time about different things. Uh, I spoke at a WordCamp earlier this year about Joomla. Uh, I, and I don't think that would have been uh, as easy to accomplish had that relationship not gotten started. Uh, part of that also was because uh, the event I was at, um, one of the contributors is active with the Joomla community, so it helped bridge that gap. So there, there's still the, I'm hardcore WordPress, I'm only WordPress, anything else just sucks. And there's still the, I'm, I'm Joomla, I'm hardcore Joomla, anything else sucks. Uh, and, it, and it's a matter of personal opinion. Um, each product has its own strong points and its own weaknesses. But um, in, in terms of community re relationships, we have a lot we can learn from them, just like they have a lot they can learn from us. And just being able to collaborate with one another at different levels, having lead developers between the two projects, being able to talk to each other really makes for a stronger environment for both products, I think. Anything else? <laughs> yes. You see it on the forums every so often. You see these mailing link po list posts every so often, and with social media taking over the way it is, you see it on social media every so often. And there's just people that like to say, well, the development strategy changed. That means that Joomla is panicking, and it's dying off, and we need to abandon it. Or I don't like the way that the software is changing. It means that Joomla is dying. Um, so some of the changes actually are because you get different leadership teams in place and they have different philosophies than uh, folks that used to be on leadership. A and there's nothing wrong with uh, that type of change per se, but it has to be um, r really well thought out change and uh, you, can't, you can't just be doing it for the sake of, well, I wanna make an impact so we're gonna do this and the next guys can go screw off. Um, so there, there was a time where I, I really was not comfortable with where Joomla was going. And then um, I just things kept changing. Uh, different people kept switching around. And uh, the community kept growing and becoming more open and more friendly. And it kind of uh, reversed that trend, in my opinion. So it's, it's not gonna radically change the code that's in web links. It's, it's, right now it's still the same code. Um, it may change based on uh, different projects that we're working on. Uh, like one of the Google Summer of Code projects was uh, looking at um, re-implementing our uh, MVC layer based on the uh, top level code that's in the framework right now. So 
if, if we accept that if we accept that work and we start refactoring components to use that work, you might see web links change to follow that model. But I think web links will still continue to be a model for how to implement uh, a Joomla component. Um, it might it might change a little bit based on how the platform changes, but overall that will still be a good uh, tutorial. If there's nothing else, I hear there's coffee outside. 